Okay, in this video we're going to look at designing polymers. So part of your study design is that you can um, find features of linear polymers designed for a particular purpose, including the selection of monomers, chain length, degree of branching, and percentage of crystalline areas, and then finally the addition of plasticizers. So we're going to cover, cover all of those things in this video. Um, the first one we're going to look at um, here is showing polar and non-polar monomers. So if we look here at these two monomers, we've got ethene and we've got chloroethene. Now you'll remember from chapter 7 that chloroethene has um, a difference in electronegativity on the chlorine and the carbon here. So this creates a polar bond, which we've shown with these uh, little delta negative and delta positive signs. And that means that when they polymerize to make polychloroethene, which is also known as polyvinyl chloride or PVC, we have these polar bonds. And that creates dipole-dipole bonds between the chains, the polymer chains, which you can see in this diagram. If we compare that to ethene, when you make polyethene, there isn't that same dipole, and therefore it's just dispersion forces which holds the chain lengths together. And that has um, implications for the properties of the substance. And so if you have stronger bonds between chain lengths, that means that the chains are not as able to move um, as easily, and therefore it might, might mean that they are um, harder and stronger. And so PVC has particular uses which require it to be hard and strong, like PVC piping, um, whereas poly polythene or polyethene um, is used as plastic bags, which is obviously a flexible kind of plastic. Next, we're going to look at um, copolymers. So this is where um, we've introduced um, styrene with butadiene. So we've got two different monomers here that we're starting with, and they come together um, to form alternate monomers. So you can see here that you've got your, your styrene monomer, which is this section, and you've got your butadiene monomer, okay, and that would just repeat itself then. And the advantage of this is um, if you pick particular monomers and particular combinations, you can get some very special properties. So this one in particular is actually an elastomer, which means that the um, the macro structure of all of the um, chains together are on flexible bonds between the chain lengths. And so as you uh, pull the material in one direction and another, these actually stretch out and then actually pull back into position afterwards. This is how you get the elastic effect of some polymers, which is where you get things like um, elastic bands from and that sort of thing. Um, if we look at this polymer here, we've got an electri electrically conductive polymer. So this was actually discovered by um, a team, an international team of scientists and won a Nobel Prize, one of which was from New Zealand. Um, and they got ethine, which is also known as acetylene, and they polymerized it to make polyethine, or sometimes it's known as polyacetylene. And this is actually a plastic, or a polymer, sorry, that's able to conduct because of this... Um, carbon-carbon double bond here being delocalized and so it can sometimes hop across to the other carbon. So it's got it's got the ability to carry charge and the fact that it's a polymer means it's particularly useful um, as circuitry inside places where you wouldn't want to put metal. So actually these are used in biosensors and you can see an image here of a biosensor. So um, that's a potential use for this sort of a polymer that actually conducts. So lots of different possibilities can come out of using different monomers to create these polymers.